Hey, welcome to a little new moon moment with Mama Mandala. Ha, I'm Hagar. I'm so glad you're here. Today's a new moon in Aquarius. And disclaimer, I'm not an astrologer. And in fact, I have this interesting relationship with astrology and with tarot, which you can see my, my altar is filled with. Um, I don't have a relationship of, uh, that is faith-based in these tools, but I love mythology and I love archetypes and I love the way that symbols and, and myth influence and affect and can have the effect of deeply supporting us in our lives. There's a book called Postcolonial Astrology by Alice, Alice Sparkly Cat. And they talk about in the book about the way that archetypes belong to a place, that they're not universal. And I, and I find that very interesting. It's very thought, it, it's provoking a lot of thought for me because I always think of archetype as, uni as universal. I think of archetypes belonging to more than a place, but calling um, and, and kind of playing the string of our shared humanity. And I love when my, the way I see things is being challenged because it causes me to think more deeply and grow. And this is very much um, one, of the, one of the functions of the sign of Aquarius, that this is the new, the, the new moon is in and also the sun is in right now. Happy birthday if you're an Aquarius. And Aquarius thinks outside the box. It's the archetype of questioning things, of considering things in new ways. It's, uh, it's uh, the archetype of forward thinking, of revolutionizing the way that we're seeing things and thinking of things. It's the, it's the part of us that is able to come up with new ideas and to think outside the box, to, to challenge the status quo, to not necessarily follow the way things are because that's how they've been, but rather to open ourselves up to the possibilities of new paths, not waiting for somebody else to carve them, but coming into the process of creating them ourselves now here's what's really lovely is that Aquarius is also a community organizer in their in their um, in their archetypal function. They always think about the way that progress needs to be made for the greater for the greater whole. They're all about gathering friends and organizing community and moving life in the direction that is collective rather than thinking only about the individual. Now, what's really beautiful about the play of archetypes is that on the opposite, um, on the opposite line, on the, on the, um, the spoke of the, of the wheel of astrology, if you put Aquarius here, Leo is going to be here. If you put Leo here, Aquarius is going to be here. So whenever, whenever the, the sign, the sun sign is in Leo, it's going to be an Aquarius full moon around that time, around that season that happens in the summer. And the same thing for now, for winter, now the sign is in, um, it's in Aquarius and the, the full moon is going to be in Leo and Leo, it, love Leos. Leos are, are very much about the, the personal and the individual and the way that we come into our own being and develop our own confidence and rise as leaders. And so they work together beautifully because Leo loves to be in the spotlight and Aquarius shines the spotlight on on everybody else. Now, Leo is also associated with the sun itself. So Leo is going to be the energy that from this deep grounded confidence, obviously when it's shadow, it's, it's, um, it's an egomania or it's a, uh, it's a narcissistic um, behavior and tendency or uh, which can show up actually as not enough confidence. Yeah. And when, it, when 
Leo is deeply rooted in their, in their strength, with fully embodying confidence, they radiate the light the way that the sun does, so that everything else is illuminated. And working together with Aquarius, it's the possibility of, of coming together, of, of moving the seat, moving the seat of the leader around the circle so that because everybody has something to add and everybody has a way um, a, w a way to lead into and things to teach us so in the in the sign of Aquarius we come together as as community and we learn from each other and we can argue with each other there's an argumentative quality to Aquarius because they can see things from um, a broad perspective you know the tarot uh, sign that's associated with Aquarius and this is you know this is just human made people came up with these ideas and they're not um, set in stone so let's not get too caught in our belief in this lines up with that and that's this it's all man-made, it's all human-made, and so we can have our own interpretation. But one way of interpreting the tarot is the tarot of the star, which is a great um, feminine character who's pouring water down into the earth. There's a pool of water and she's pouring down into it and there's a reflection and it's a representation. It's a tarot that symbolizes hope and vision and new ways of thinking very much the way that Aquarius represents that too now in Egypt in ancient Egypt the the Aquarius was rising around the time of sunset the constellation was rising rising around the time of sunset and in July when the Nile was flooded and so the, you know, it's the time of the year when the sun is in Leo and the mo full moon is going to be in Aquarius. And so it was associated in, in, in Egypt with the flooding of the Nile, which was uh, related to Osiris, the god um, Osiris, who was thought of as an energy that fertilizes Isis, that fertilizes the goddess of um, in this case, the earth. She's a goddess of much more than that. But it's the idea of flooding, our, of the way that ideas flood our system and fertilize our creative life. And from there, from our, from our creativity and from the powerful vision that we have, we can come into the world in the way of art, but also come into the world in the way of art as activism. And it doesn't, we don't have to be art, all artists, we don't all have to be writers. It's not, um, it's not to think that life is about art making, but it's, it's more um, an invitation to think that life itself, that life is art, that life itself and how we live it as art. And as we live, in, in this world, we live together, we are interconnected, we're always affecting one another. What we're doing is affecting the environment, obviously. So the Aquarius thinking is looking for solutions and moving in the direction of actually doing something about it. So it could feel like a flood of ideas, like a, like a download of insights and so much inspiration that sometimes feels like a flood like we don't know what to do with it but it fertilizes the ground of our being and gives us an opportunity to allow our inspiration to guide our way in how we live life and also then to guide our life living process in a, in a collective vision to keep reminding ourselves to do that for more, for more than ourselves, to keep reminding ourselves to, to gather. Because to, we know that the greatness of our ideas and the vastness of our ideas, when it feels like a lot, when it feels like a huge downpour of, 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 concepts coming into being inside ourselves and we want to bring them forth it to bring that forth 
and to bring it to life and to make the vision into um, a formed, shaped reality, we're going to need more than ourselves. We're going to need each other. We're going to need help. We're going to need support. We're going to need somebody else, other people, many others to help us. And so we can consider the way that who are we gathering around us to help support our bringing our ideas into reality and also how do our ideas how how are how is the reality shaped and formed by our ideas and our inspiration is going to be for for the supportive for more than just ourselves right supportive and and nourishing in that flooding of the river that brings more food and more growth into the world for something more than ourselves for for the collective and so the the invitation of this great archetype we are new mooning in today is to think collectively to bring it through the individual to allow ourselves to receive insights and downpour of inspiration. And it's also, I think of in Aquarius, because Aquarius is the water bearer, right? That's the meaning of that word, of, that, of those words. And so it's someone who carries water. It's our ability to, to create a vessel that we carry the water in and from there we pour. But another beautiful way of thinking of it is that our inspiration that we often think of as a downpour is also a bubbling up. It's something that rises from inside. It's something that comes through the well of our, of our creativity. It's rising from inside and coming up the way that sacred springs all over the world rise from inside the belly of the earth and water bubbles up towards the surface. So we can think of being the water bearer as someone who carries it and pours it down to share it with more than themselves and allow it to rise and bubble from within, right? And receive it, receive it as downpour from up above and carry it with us for more than ourselves. So hope this is interesting for you and helps you um, create a little bit of a, of a sacred moment for yourself for this new moon. Here's what we're going to do just for a quick moment. The glyph of Aquarius is, a, is the waves. It's two waves. And it's actually thought of more than waves of water, although obviously it's related to water because the water bearer, it's also electrical waves. That's the more modern way of interpreting it. And so... You can think of the way that a, a lightning, a lightning rod, a, a, a flash of lightning is a hit of inspiration, a great idea that comes into being and electrifies you and brings you into, uh, into relationship with your own muse. And so we're going to do a mudra of, um, of um, thunderbolt, of lightning and it's it's called vajra mudra this is a mudra from from india vajra is uh, the word in sanskrit for um for thunderbolt and it's also the word for diamond because it's the way that light fractures it's the way that the one light fractures and becomes the many so again it's the invitation as we take this mudra and we can just bring the hands together and interlace the fingers and then your thumbs just rest by your index and the index extend up. And you can bring that next to your heart. And so we remind ourselves that this ability to, um, to come into the world as light, to drop down as a great illuminating force, is not about staying singular. It's not just us, but it fractures as the diamond and it radiates in many directions. There are many forms. So as we come into these rebellious, out-of-the-box ideas and thinking, 
And you can allow yourself to soften your eyes if you'd like as you hold the mudra next to your heart. And as you turn to your breath, We can allow ourselves to receive the opportunity to hear and listen and see and explore more than our own, more than our own experience and expression, but the thunderbolt the lightning, the diamond, reminds us that the way that the world is fractured, like the light hitting the diamond, is an opportunity to see and listen and be with more than our own voice. And so we breathe. And mudras are tools of receptivity. And so we receive into this mudra or create a vessel to receive into insight, ideas, inspiration, muse, the flood of new ways of being and so we breathe and we receive and we breathe and we allow and with our breath we make space for ourselves Allow your sit bones to root into the earth, into your seat, wherever it is that you are, on a couch, on the floor, in your car. And if you're in the car, don't hold the mudra and, and don't close your eyes. And we make space for more than ourselves. We make space for the movement of the many for the refraction of light as it becomes many colors, many ways, a glorious expression of a woven together world that's filled with opinions and thoughts expressions filled with vision and insight. And so in this space, in this field, we get to play with each other and learn from each other. Breathe. And we can chant together to pour into this mantra, into this mudra, the mantra, the sound of Om that reminds us of our collectivity, the hum of the universe that reminds us that we're never separate. And so we join it and we join it together. Three Ohms, deep breath.
Namaste Mudra, bring the hands in Anjali Mudra together in front of the heart and softly bow to yourself, to the insights, the downpour, the inspiration, the muse that you not only receive but also share with the world around you. Thank you so much for joining me. That was really fun and happy new moon and I will see you soon. <laughs> That's my poem for today. <laughs> Bye.